All right. So in the third line of poem, Dalesbris, um, I found out in that Dalesbris was an Amazon princess who uh, supposedly was one of the lovers of Alexander the Great. Um, the reason why I believe she's being referenced here is because she's known for her command and presence, especially due to the fact that she was the one of the few people who absolutely um, was able to get the attention of Alexander the Great. And he regarded her very highly, which may have something to do with um, her trying to get the attention of the crown and stuff. The argument was going on. Well, she's not physically there. Yeah. Um, I think she's being referenced uh, because Belinda's making a whole bunch of noise. Yeah, and that would probably that would be dramatic. And and she's all about, hey, what's that? Let's, who cares about this talking about? Let's actually. Yeah. These guys, since they're being rude, they're calm. Being her guests. And then, uh, moving on to uh, the next one, uh, Belinda fails. She doesn't so much fail because she actually does get everybody's attention. I believe that's uh, just being used um, as she's besieging the crowd at the moment, trying to get everybody's attention. Mm -hmm. And uh, not half so fixed, which um, the Trojan could remain. Now, the Trojan army was well known for their, their strong minds and the fact that they would not back down to anything. Um, when everyone moved up close, kind of like the palace guards, you know, uh, how they don't move no matter how much you go up and talk to them and poke them and everything. They're not supposed to poke them. Um, <laughs> so, uh, they're not supposed to, it's, uh, the entire crowd kind of immediately stands stock still as she's yelling and trying to get their attention. So, I believe that's the reason why the Trojans are being referenced, because the Trojans were known for their amazing ability to stand extremely still, no matter what they're staring down. Trying to figure out how that would be in the text. And also, um, I thought it was a little bit of note what the, uh, the great Calissa uh, waved her fang. And actually, I did build the track this, because I always see it in pictures, I didn't know if they actually carried them around. But apparently, a lot of them, well, the, more, the richer women, apparently did carry around fans as part of their general like attire. Yeah. I actually learned there was a whole language. There was a whole language. Yeah, like how you know the man, how you waved it. Well, it yeah. was, it's fascinating. That's, it's yes, just it's like, intense. it is intense. Yeah, this is your amusing me. This is I'm about to cut your head off. That actually it's is really it is. cool. No, 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 I can't remember exactly, but I think that that Actually, was I did find a new, there was a book published with pictures. Yes. Um, <laughs> what was the name of the book? The book was like, The True View with the Woman's Eye. <laughs> and then it just had a picture of a fan on the front of it. <laughs> it was a translator book for it. Wow. No, but yeah, you don't see that. This is what the fan means. <laughs> and then, um... It's moving on again now, uh, when they're all sitting on the uh, couches, a white glove, Fuchs, which I believe is. Fuchs. Fuchs? French. I'm sure. Go French. Um, uh, actually, is a term uh, used for female escorts for like the gentlemen of the party. So if your wife was indisposed, or you just didn't like your wife very much, or didn't have a wife, um, you could basically take these women to come to the party with you and pretend to be your and just just be there just with you, because it was uh. Everybody knew it. Anyway. It, was, it was looked down upon to show up alone to a party, yeah. so especially a society party. And there was no stag next to it. And uh, the charm of the small pox and chase all age away. Um, you has many en uh, enemies such as elements in old age, and it's impossible to fight those off and get rid of them, so... No matter how much people wish to do. You don't die eventually. Right? Exactly. So that's, I believe, where that comes in. Um, just mentioning the futility of trying to 
And continuing with beauty, um, since painted or not painted, all shall fade. Um, actually, a lot of the makeup back then was in the form of actual paint. And somebody would sit there with a paintbrush and kind of just do your face up. Mm -hmm. So, paint the faces. Um, and I'm curious if it was lead. Oh, yeah, yeah. a lot of it had lead, um, yeah. which didn't really help with the general health. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was an age of that. So, mm -hmm. the, um, but the whole point is that it's also saying uh, whether or not you are a woman who wears makeup or whether or not you are a woman who does not wear makeup. Um, both of these will fade as long as you take them out of person that wears makeup. But, and also, uh, near the end of this stanza, um, and keep good humors or whatever we lose, and trust me, dear, good humor shall prevail. Um, good humor in this instance, I always thought of joking with other people, but it is being used as a way to uh, just look at things in a more positive light and shrug off an insult and go, well, you cut off my hair, that was weird. But, um, I'm at a party, so, oh well. <laughs> Whoa. 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 Okay. Um, all right, I guess let's just keep Where, going. Wait, where'd they go? Uh, oh, well. We'll find them. We can keep going. Let's, the right. first um, moment where I was just like, what? What does this mean? Was Fierce Virago. And when I looked it up in the dictionary, I found that there was a more modern um, definition that I decided to completely ignore because I didn't like it. And also, this is sort of like a not modern text. So. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's archaic. So I went with the archaic version of the word. And it's a woman of masculine strength or spirit, a female warrior. So I was like, oh, yeah, that, that seems to fit. That fits. Awesome. Um, so, so. That's what I put down. The next next one was fans class clack silks rustle and tough whalebones crack. And when I first read this, I literally thought, okay, weaponry, like actual real weaponry. So when I was when I was looking it up, I'm like weaponry whalebone, and I'm like, what's with all these dresses? I'm surprised dresses still came up even though you specified weaponry. Exactly, exactly. Well, no, I'm not surprised. surprised. But in retrospect, it makes perfect sense because whale bones tend, tend to be only used for um, corsets. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so it has such a rigid frame. It, it's just uh, he uses this this line to show how utterly ridiculous this situation is. It's just it's framed in such a dramatic way where it, it sounds like it's weaponry. Does. Yeah, that's yeah, like the whole point of the thing is like it's taking something that's it's literally making mountains out of molehills. Exactly, exactly. I agree. It's it cracks me like, up. Up the whole. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like trying to make this silly thing into an epic thing. Yeah. yeah. Which follows with the use of Greek gods and Roman gods, same ones, but same ones, um, different names. Yeah, exactly. It's like most of the gods he mentions are related to war, or. Um, healing, like uh, Latona, who is the mother of Artemis and Apollo. Uh, Artemis was the goddess of the hunt, and uh, Apollo was the god of healing and medicine. So it's like, it's a very warrior-like uh, situation. Yeah. So he, he's mentioning all these warrior gods and goddesses to kind of build up. Everything and it's just so ridiculous. So ridiculous. I, I love it so much. <laughs> I mean, like it's, it's probably like along the same kind of thing as like when they were mentioning that uh, Amazonian warrior. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the the, the, the this, yeah, tail strips or whatever. Tail strips, I, yeah. <laughs> I had to look that Where's up. the pronunciation guy? Yeah. We get to a view and wilting uh, perished in the throng. One died in metaphor and one died in song. I honestly have no idea what that means. I still don't. I think it does mean that um, it's just about all the men calling to the power that is the women, and they're all perishing, even though they're not actually dying. Yeah, um, so one died in metaphor, and one died in song. So the metaphor, and then the song.
film, which oh. has a whole bunch of medical in it, and it's very, very dramatic in song. Yeah, it's all like, they didn't actually die, they just mostly died yeah. in a fake way. Yes, exactly. The last. Alright, so it's like uh, Sir Plume and Drew flipped it down, and then Chloe stepped in and killed him with her frown. I don't think it ever mentions Chloe before that, so I'm just assuming it's just, yeah. weird, just some random woman. No idea. But it's basically like she frowns at him, so he stops. And then she's like, oh, good, he stopped because I frown. I'm going to smile about that. Yeah. Then he sees the smile, and he's like, oh, I'm going to get back at it then. Yeah. It's basically like red light, green light. Yeah. <laughs> uh, And then, um, like you were mentioning earlier with the gods and stuff, they mentioned Jove. Well, that's normally just like a general expression. It's still like a reference to Jupiter. Or By Jove! Yeah. So, there's more of that. And then, the whole section at the end there was like, with one finger and thumb subdued. Like, starting there, going onward. It's just, okay, he, she threw some tobacco in his face. And it's like, oh, the gnomes guided every atom to hit his nose just the right way. So that would be like, sneeze! And then she takes advantage of that and pounces on him and draws her hairpin. That's what the box in it is. Mm. It's just a hairpin. Okay. And for some reason, this hairpin has a history. It's all like, hey, this used to be like your great grandfather's necklace. And then it was made into a buckle for a dress. And then it was made into like a children's rattle or something like that. And now it's a hairpin. There are eight lines about this hairpin. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And like, <laughs> The reason for that was just because it's like um, this entire confrontation is supposed to be like the, a battle from an epic, like yeah. a big climactic fight. Only it's like the climax of the fight is he sneezes, mm-hmm. and so they give the Bodkin this rich history, like it's Excalibur or something. <laughs> just drew the Bodkin from her bun, like it was a sword from a stone. Oh my God. It's just it's so ridiculous. It's supposed to be the feel of an epic. I guess so, because it is. It's <laughs> totally an epic. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. Stands with four. And mine pretty much just continues on to John's, which is uh, the fight. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and she's like, uh, but it's not my fault. She tried it so far. Which is pretty much, hey, someone told me. It's like, hey, dude. Okay, you knocked me down. Don't go boasting about it. You just threw some stuff in my face. Look, did, exactly. you, did you, did you exactly. really attack me with a hairpin? Like, yeah. Come on. What? Come and, on. Yeah, we're pretty much they just continue to fight over there. She just wants her hair back. Yeah. Which is the restore the lock is what you know, give my hair the lock of hair. And um not fierce there's a there's a um a little bit that says not fierce also in so loud a strain. Lord and the hate said that caused his pain. Othello is a uh, a character in Shakespeare's work, which is uh the tragedy of our Othello. So Othello's um, handkerchief is the handkerchief was his wife's handkerchief, and he pretty much just found her another man's uh, home, and you know just to kill her. Hmm. That's pretty much yeah, pretty much it. So another epic, so to say, hmm. in there. Yeah. But like I said, mine just con- continues with uh, the fight and gives back my longer hair. But there was a a little neat part that I had no idea what it meant. And it was cages for gnats and chains to yoke the flea, dried butterflies and tones of cashew. 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 So tones of cashew is books of unpaid reading. So what I I pretty much concluded with that because it is you know the last bit was um, don't give me you know pretty much all your reasoning is crap. Is pretty yeah, much it, it makes as much sense as putting a <coughs> chain on a flea. There you exactly. go. Yeah. That's basically what I was trying to get at, I guess. Yeah, that's all yeah. the other thing with that. Yeah. Nice. At least in my understanding with this yeah. crazy non testicle epic. Yeah. Yeah. Good, welcome back. Hey, how's it going? Where did you go over there? Here you go. Alright, in the bottom of the poem, he's stating to Proculus alone can the best end view. Proculus was a Roman usurper and was one of the minor pretenders who wished to rule Rome, according to the Historia Augusta, which was basically the history book of Rome, mm-hmm. and all of its famous lords. The next one, there's a reference in that where there's a term used that not too many people will know, is this the 
Beaumont just got thrown in the mall survey. Beaumont is actually a nice fancy 25 cent word for the fashionable world and high society. Not even a 50 cent word. Look, 25, 25 cents. cents is worth a lot back then. Well, that's true. Yeah. Although the cent didn't actually exist. So I'm not sure yeah. It, it, it was worth a shilling. That was referring to basically all of the society that was actually attending this party. So that was a big deal. Yeah, pretty big deal. Uh, I just thought like, hey, nice, fancy looking word. Like, oh, man. The next reference that we learn to get is to. The fate of Lewis and the fall of Rome. Then cease bright nymphs to mourn thy ravished hair. Lewis is referring to the last emperor of the Holy Roman Empire during the time period of 1814 to 1840. Then the next reference is to the nymphs, which the nymph is referring to beautiful or graceful young women. Basically, this is referring to Valenta, our maiden who got her hair chopped off at this party. Yeah, and they use nymph a lot throughout the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I think they refer to a different woman every time, too. Really. Okay. Yeah. Countess. That was number three. Set four. The next reference that we find in the poem is in the line, And all those tresses shall be laid. This refers to what tresses. Tresses is actually a lot of those words that they just felt like being fancy. It's for hair. Mm -hmm. They are talking about how Belinda's hair got cut off yeah. for about the ninth time. Like they think they have the entire story. Well, that's what the whole thing is about. There's so many names for the cat instead of just for the only reason to see the cat. <laughs> now, the final reference that we find in the last things of the poem is. And the line, this lock the muse shall consecrate to fame, and miss the stars and describe Belinda's name. The muses is another reference to Greek mythology. The muses were the daughters of the great god Zeus, and their music was famous for bringing joy to all those who heard it. So if the lesson was also in this instance, it could have been referring to a celestial being. Or just, you know, something in general, like a deity or something. So, yes. hey, let's put this hair in the sky and make it a star. Yes, just trying to reference some other worldly power. So, cut. Cut. Let's cut. 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 Cut.